bless you. Please be seated. Oh my goodness, how good is it to be in church with real people? Real people. Man, we're almost a novelty. But uh, what a wonderful thing. I'm genuinely, genuinely like everybody else who's been up here. It's just so fantastic uh, to be in church with a whole bunch of other people instead of standing up here pretty much with an empty, you know, auditorium and it's all good, but great to be with all of those online as well, of course, but uh, gee, it's so good to have people here and to be uh, gathering together in this place. <clears throat> yeah, so um, at the beginning of uh, a year, it's my practice to go to Heaven's Inquiry Counter. Do you know Heaven's got an inquiry counter? All right, you are real and you are here. You can, okay, all right. So there's an inquiry account in heaven. You ought to go looking for it. And uh, I often pop in there and ask uh, the Father, Lord, have you got anything you specifically want to speak to us as a church for the year ahead? <clears throat> and uh, does he have another thread that he wants to sew into the fabric of who we are? And uh, this is why we call this idea of origins, because when you go back over the messages and you start to understand, why do we do that? Why are we like that? Well, it'll be because of messages like this, where we start to say, no, this, these messages actually begin to, uh, that's just another thread into the fabric of who we are. And so last year, you might remember that uh, the the, the uh, the thread that we were sewing or we felt God say, sew this into the fabric of who you are, was intentionally inclusive. You did remember, right? Yes. <laughs> Just checking, I know. Deafening silence. <clears throat> intentionally inclusive. Now that... That wasn't just for last year or, or a message that, uh, you know, about the same time as last year. That, 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 that's become part of who we are. That's a, that's a thread that's been sewed into the fabric of who we are. And it's one of our origin messages, if you like. <clears throat> well, this year, I believe the Father said to me, this year, it's about being intentionally collective. Intentionally collective. And I sat down and I, over the last couple of weeks and I pondered on that and meditated on it and I found that there were two scriptures that were very helpful in clarifying what that meant. Intentionally collective. The first one is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. And you might notice it'll be up on the screens if it's not there. There it is right there. You'll notice where it talks about assembling of ourselves together. Assembling of ourselves together. Now, I want to take a moment just to pull that apart because the New King James Version is the, one of the very few versions that still retains the word assembly. And you really have to understand what was the writer saying to the, church, to the Hebrews when he used the word assembling. Uh, to say that you're assembling is a whole lot more than just gathering together. Just gathering together, which many of the other scriptures tend to, to uh, use, <clears throat> seems to lose something of the original understanding of what the writer was saying in the book of Hebrews. The full understanding of the word assembling in the original Greek translation means the entire group. Please say after me, entire group. Entire group. The entire group of people within an organization who are all gathering together at the same place at the same time. One, two, three people going. Right. Let me say that again. The word assembling in the original Greek means the entire group of people in that organization assembling together, in a gathering together at one place in one time. So the writer of Hebrews was being very de deliberate, very deliberate in using the word assembly because it's really important that we all collect and gather together at the same place at the same time as often as possible. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that for a long time. Unfortunately, because of the times we're living in, we haven't been able to actually do what the word is saying, assemble the entire group coming together at the same place at the same time as often as is possible. Um, 
you know, if you, if you, as you walked in, you may not have noticed this, but if you have a look on your way out, you will. You've probably seen it, but you just, didn't, you just don't notice it anymore. But there's a sign out there in front of most buildings, and we've got one, and it's got an emergency assembly point. There you go. There's a photograph just to prove it. All right, so there's an emergency assembly point. Actually, it's by law. We have to have one of those because, of course, if there is an emergency, something has, happens here. We've all got to vacate, and how many of us are meant to gather in that point? Everybody. Actually, we've got one over there as well, so some might go over there. But, but, but the idea is that's a, that the entire group... We want everybody to come out of the building and we want you all to assemble in the one place at the one time. Similarly, schools have an assembly. Do you remember this? How many people are still at school? You remember that you have times when you have an assembly. Do they still call it that? Yeah, there's an assembly. All right, so the idea is that uh, the entire school comes together and should be together at one place at one time. Um, it might vary these days, but that's the original intent, that the whole school would come together at the one place at the one time. You know what? It's not actually an emergency that we come together and gather in church at the one place at the same time, but it should be an urgency. May not be an emergency, but it, there is an there's an urgency within the body of Christ to get together the whole lot of us, the entire group, and gather in the one place at the one time as often as we can. There's an, in my heart, the idea of what the, what the writer in Hebrews was saying is, listen, there's actually an urgency to assemble everyone coming together, get together. And we, that, this idea of being intentionally Collective. Come on, let me hear it again. To be intentionally collective. collective. He's in that teaching mode. I want to hear some feedback. All right. The voice, the voice translation of this verse says in the study notes. Now, uh, it's just one of the versions that, that I have, and there are a number of versions that you can study from, but, but this one is also, I find, very helpful. But the, the voice translation in the study notes says this. The word translated church in English Bibles means literally assembly of the called. How many people know we're called of Jesus Christ? How many people know we are the church? Then the church are the called out ones. We're the called out ones. And, this, and, the, and as this Bible points out, when, you, when we call ourselves the church, we are saying that we are the assembly of the called out ones. And it implies that members have said yes to God's call in their lives. And so when God spoke to me about being intentionally collective, he was saying that it's imperative imperative that those who are part of his church and know they have been called by him look at it assemble together as one body in one place at one time as often as possible got it the word assembling we are the the, the word church literally means the assembly of the called out ones and this is why I'm so keen for us to understand what this word assembly means. It's not just gathering together when you can, you know, a few of us will get together. This is, this is when, you use, when you just say the word gather together, then it, it loses the whole idea of the whole lot of us, the entire group. There's an urgency in coming together at one place at one time. And it's about being intentionally collective. The word assembly is this, this idea of intentionally wanting to collect together and, uh, and, and the whole lot of us at that one place at one time. And of course for us, at least currently, it's uh, supposed to be Sunday mornings. And uh, that, that's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be Sunday mornings, but it, it, it's probably the one that we, we work around and that doesn't mean it's, it can't change. But we need to tr put aside and be, and be intentionally collective on Sunday mornings because we are the assembly of the called. Hello? We are the assembly of the called. Therefore, in our heart of hearts, it, there's an urgency to gather together. And for us, it's a, particularly on Sunday mornings. That's not to say, by the way, that there aren't other times during the week that we can do that. But to get the entire group together, which is the idea of assembly, 
to get the entire group together, we try to do that on a Sunday morning. So uh, why does he say that it's imperative that we assemble? Well, here's the second verse that helped me understand that. Listen to what Acts 2.42 tells us. Acts 2.42 is giving us a bit of an understanding of the early church just after it had been formed. And look what it says in Acts 2.42. And they devoted. Could I please ask everybody to say the word devoted? And they They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Key word for me there is devoted. What does the word devote actually mean? Devoted means passionately prioritizing these things in their lives. Devoted. If you're devoted to something, then you are passionately prioritizing it in your life. What was the early church passionately prioritizing their life? Well, the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Now look, <clears throat> uh, the apostles' teaching, of course, is when we come together and you, you gather like we are now and someone speaks and we believe that they are bringing some teaching to the body of Christ. I believe that's exactly what we're doing right now. And they prioritize that. They prioritize coming and having some of that teaching. The second thing was the fellowship, getting together in the one place at the one time. The breaking of bread, in that particular verse, the the breaking of bread means communion, what we call communion. Did you hear that? They prioritized, passionately prioritized, that when they got together, they took communion. That's why Civic maintains that as often as we come together like this in an entire group, that we still take communion. That's not always the case, you know, in different other churches. I'm not not making any other statements about that. I'm just simply saying that's why we do it, because they prioritize it. And I believe that it's 100% important that when we get together, we prioritize communion or the breaking of bread. And the last thing was the prayers. And that meant when they came together, corporately communicating with God. We know that we can individually communicate with God and we can do that in our homes and as you drive in the car or wherever you might be. But there's something very special when you come together in one place at one time, the entire group, and corporately pray together. Corporately pray together. Well, uh, the Greek word for, the, uh, for, the, for this idea of fellowship is koinonia. And that means participation. So we are to se- assemble together for, the, for those four things that I've just read out, but particularly this idea of fellowship, which is koinonia, which means that we come together to actively participate in what, what we're doing when we get together. How many people know that it's hard to actively participate when we're spread out all over the place and, uh, and, and not gathered together? I mean, we can still do it, but it's so hard to, get, to be actively participating. And so the, this now speaks to the very heart of what God is meaning by being intentionally collective. He wants us as a church to to assemble together as one body in one place at one time as often as we can to participate in the playing uh, in playing our part and in being the church. You can see I'm a little bit stirred up about this. Intentionally collective. I, I promise you as I sat down over the, over the first couple of weeks of this, of this year and started to get a fuller understanding of what God was really saying about being intentionally collective, it really started to resonate in my own heart of hearts how, how there is such an urgency in the scriptures that we do come together as one body in one place at one time as often as we can to participate in and play our part in being the church. We're not to be passive. We're not to be passive. We're meant to be actively participating in this idea of fellowshipping together. You know, I'm so thankful, so very grateful that we're living in a day when we have church online. And I'm aware that not everyone is here is sitting in this auditorium with me. And I'm so thankful that there's a whole bunch that are still there joining in online. Um, and, you know, I, I, I believe that in our online services, we're still able to get the biblical teaching, we're still able to do communion, and we can still pray together. Who knows that? 
When you're doing online, when you're online, we can still have biblical teaching, we can still do communion together, and we can still pray together. But one thing we cannot do out of the four things listed there for, for the early church is fellowship in the way that the scriptures are asking us to. You see, what we can do when we're online is we do participate, but sadly, it is in a passive way. When you come together, there's the idea of we get this, this point where we can be together and actively participate in what we're in, not just in the service, but also when we're out mixing with one another and, 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 and encouraging. I'll talk about this uh, shortly. Uh, but, but this idea of we're, we're missing an, a, a key component. We miss a key component when we're simply doing church online. We're thankful for church online. We're grateful for having the, the technology to be able to do that. But we can never ever let that take, its pla take the place of assembling together. We can do church online, but we can't be the church. Did you hear that? I said we can do church, but we can't. Because when we be the church, it's assembled together, the whole lot of us, in one place at one time and actively participating in coming together. We, can't, we, we can do church online, but we can't be the church. Online church is a body gathered together, sometimes at the same time, but never in the same place. We're all over the place. Hello? When we do church online, and remember, I'm, not, I'm telling you, we, we're grateful for church online. We're so thankful that we've got that technology, but we have to be clear about what does the Scriptures tell us about being intentionally collective. Uh, when we're being intentionally collective, we've got to be in the same place at the same time, uh, the, as many, uh, the, if possible, the entire group. But when we do church online... As much as we can gather together and we can still do church, well, we're doing church, but we're not being the church because we're not in the same place and not necessarily at the same time because sometimes when we're watching church online, we tend to, well, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up on that later. and That's all good. I'm not having a problem with that. But it does lose, when we do church online, it does lose something of what the scripture says about coming together, intentionally collecting and assembling as the called, as the church. You know, as much as I'm saying, it can never, ever, it has a place. Does, does online church have a place? 100% it's got a place. Thank goodness it's got a place. We're so thankful for it. But it can never, ever replace the assembling of the fellowshipping of the church. It has a place, but it can never, ever replace assembly. It can't do that. And this is why I believe that the Holy Spirit and, uh, is so passionate right now. You know, we've had two years, two full years of where we've not been able to do what the Scriptures are really saying when it means assemble. We, we, we've, we've been able to do church online. We're grateful for that. But I really believe that this year the Holy Spirit is saying, come on, be intentionally collective. Come on, let's get back together again. Come on, let's be the entire group as often as we can. Let's get back to the get together again in one place at one time. One body. Um, I am, and as many of us would be, so grateful that during these pandemic times, or if I'm traveling, or I'm on holidays, or I'm on business, I'm sick, or unable to attend, that I'm, or I'm living in a remote area, I can still gather online. There are, many off, there are many reasons why you can't get here. You know, sickness or, or traveling, way on holidays, living in a remote area. There's many things, pandemics, whatever it is. If those things are happening in my life, well then online is, the, is what I need to do because I still want to prioritize church, right? That's what I want. Online has a place. It can have a replace though. Hebrews 10.24 talks about stirring up, which doesn't mean simply coming to church to passively listen. And so here we go. When you come to church, when we come and gather and assemble, 
We're meant to stir one another up. This idea of stirring one another up, this idea of stimulating, motivating, provoking one another to acts of love and good works. So in other words, if I'm doing church online, what I need to be doing, if, this, if I was to try and do this, I need to be actively talking, or not during the service, but I need to be, straight after the service, I need to get on my phone and get on my, my emails and I need to start emailing a whole bunch of people or, or talking or texting to a whole bunch of people within the church because I, I, if I really want to try to do what the church is meant to do, I should be getting on there and spending another hour after the church service fellowshipping by... Uh, having a form of fellowship to stir other people up to say how good is it that we can still talk to one another even in these pandemic times well I've got to be honest with you I don't do that when, when, when I when, when, when Margaret and I you know it's because we rostered on uh, here uh, if I'm not rostered on here and it's and it's it's we're unable to attend you know, well, well, we'll certainly make the point and prioritise what well, we're going to watch church and it's going to be at, this, at that time and we're going, to, we're going to take communion. We want to be involved as best as we can. But then as soon as it's over, to sit down and start saying, well, now, how do we fellowship with the rest of the church? Doesn't happen. Maybe we're the only people. But the fact of the matter is, it's when you come here and we go outside these doors and we, we're in that foyer area, or as we're sitting here and we get to chat amongst one another, but normally as we're going out in that foyer or as we've come in, that's where the fellowship happens. That's where that koinonia happens, where we are actively participating in speaking to one another and encouraging each other, stimulating and motivating and provoking one another to a random acts of love and good works. So that as we go out from, the, from our, our gathered time into, the, into our world, we go away knowing that we belong to something, we're part of something, we're participating in this, we've gathered again, and as we go out into our world, we're now stirred up to continue to do uh, random acts of love and good works, which is what the Scriptures tell us to do. Who's with me? Yeah. Passive attendance is not active participation. And so I'd even encourage us here today, Please, whatever you do, don't just, when, we, when we're finished here, and I know that you may have a, a lot of pressing things, and I'm all for that, and if there are family members that don't go to church and they're sort of wanting to have you at a birthday party or something, you've got to go in a hurry, that's all good. But what we try to do is not do that. When we finish the service right here and we go out into the foyer, we take time, just linger a little bit. Find someone, talk to someone, say hello to someone, Hopefully, before you finish the discussion, you've been able to say how good is it that we've come together today and to remember that Jesus Christ has made the difference in our life and what we want to do now is make a difference in other people's lives as we go out of here. Who's with me? That is talking about uh, coming together as the church. When I'm intentionally collective, I am assembling with those who are part of the church and I make it my top priority because I'm passionate about being able to play my part and actively participating in fellowship. <clears throat> you know, Ephesians put it this, puts it this way. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16 puts it all together. I'm reading from the NLT, the uh, New Living Translation. He makes the whole body, he speak, when he says that, the whole body, he's talking about the church, fit together perfectly. Did you hear that? Fit together perfectly. Other scriptures use the word knit together, which actually means interlocked and interlocking knots. When you come together at church, we're meant to be interlocking with one another and sort of getting knotted to one another or tied to one another, fitting perfectly together. Um, as each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. Did you know that you have a part to play? Three people. Did you know that you actually have a part to play? You might be sitting there saying, Brennan, I don't know what part I've got to play. Well, a part could simply be to go out when you're finished here and to sit with someone and listen to them. Just to say, hey, we're in it together, right? We're doing this, we're doing life together. Isn't that a good thing? To play that part, just to let other people know that we're in this, doing this together? So that the whole body 
The church is healthy and growing and full of love. Do you know, it is my conviction, it is my conviction that if online church became our norm, then the body of Christ would be disfigured, disjointed, and dysfunctional. If we understand what the scripture's talking about when it says, come together, the entire group in one place at one time. Because when we come together and we interlock and we're knotted together and we participate in that, well then we function in the way that he asks us to function. We're not disjointed, we're, we're joined together. And we function, we're not dysfunctional and we're not, listen to me, disfigured. The, the body being disfigured, all scattered all over the place. Does online church have a place? Yes. Absolutely it has. Thank you for everyone who's joining us today. Can it ever replace the assembling of the called? Never. It can't do that. So let me conclude. You know, over the past year or more, whilst the whole pandemic thing's been happening, uh, the board and I have been uh, working on a strategic development plan for this whole site that will span the next tw uh, 10 to 20 years. This site, the, the site that we are on at the moment, has about 17 and a half acres. There's about half of it that has been built on. There's a, the, the half of it that's still vacant. You would have noticed that. And so the idea is that the board and myself have spent quite a bit of time working together with strategic development planners to come up with an idea of what might we be able to do with the rest of this site. One of the key components of that development plan is that we were, we've considered where will be the new assembly point. Where will be the new assembly point for the church and where, what might it look like in the future and we believe that the best place for it to be would be situated on the corner of Ruffin and Spring. Who knows that vacant block of land sitting there? And so we're believing that that would be, if, if, if we're going to relocate and we want to put a, well, the assembly point for the church, that would be the logical place for it to go. In other words, we're suggesting that church online will never become the norm for civic. We're suggesting that we are intentionally collective and therefore we will need an assembly point. So we're talking even into the next 10, year, 10 years or more, we're still believing that's, what's going to be, that's, that's what civic will be known for. They are intentionally collective people. So look, check this out. Now there should be some uh, uh, slides coming up. There they go. And so this is just giving you a quick run through of an artist's impression of the kind of, uh, did we, that's it, you've got them. Uh, an artist's impression of uh, what, what we're thinking might be on that block of land. Please let me emphasize this. Please hear this. This is just one component of a whole site plan and something we probably won't embark on for at least the next five to 10 years. It was the vision of others who gave us the opportunity to do this and now it's our turn. We're really so grateful that we've got this building and we are in absolutely no hurry to leave this building. So please, when you walk away from this, please don't go, oh, well, well you're going to put a new building out there. What's wrong with this building? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with this building. We're happy with this building. But we are thinking future. We're thinking of what might be. And, and as we look at the whole block of land where we're situated right here today, maybe there may be better uses for this, this particular site. But if that was the case, well then we will have strategically worked out how will we then relocate the assembly point. Please understand me, we're not, we're not talking about packing up and getting all, you know, where, where, what, what's wrong, nothing. We love it here, we're happy here and we don't see ourselves moving from here for a number of years. But we are thinking about this. Hey, here's the good news, we already own the land. 
We already own the land. By the way, it's worth $1.5 million. $1.5 million at last count. And, and it was given to us by previous generations to steward for the future. Uh, it was the, the vision of this assembly that met here 40 plus years ago that has now given us the opportunity to do this. And I've got to tell you, uh, one of the things that I'm passionate about, one of the legacies that I want to be involved with in, 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 in this time here at Civic Church is that we didn't just sit on our hands and go, oh, I'm not sure what we're going to keep doing for the next five or ten years. But the reality is it's our turn, people. It's our turn to start dreaming and visioning for the future generation. Are you with me? Well, it starts with being collectively intentional. Uh, intentionally collective. That's the one. You can say it both ways. Um, the board and I believe this. Come on, we're just about finished. The board and I believe that the assembly point of the church should have a position, a profile, a presence in its community that's visible. Not intangible, something out there online. Hello? It's got to be visible. In its community, have a position, have a profile, and have a presence in its community. I believe it starts with us today. I said, I believe it starts with us today. Are you with me? What does it mean we need to do as of today? Be intentionally, be intentionally collective. And as a church, I believe God's heart is for Civic to be known as a people that love to assemble, not just gather together, but we love to assemble and collect as one body in one place at one time as often as we can. You with me? intentionally collective come on let's pray father how good is it that we come together this morning and that we can not just gather but assemble father we thank you so much for giving us the technology and the ability to be able to do that online when it's necessary and lord we know that over the past couple of years and it's just been so necessary for us to be able to continue to do church but our father we want to be the church we don't want to just do church. We want to be the church and we want to do what you ask of us and what you tell us to do. We want to come together as one body in one place at one time as often as we can. Lord, we want it to become an urgency, an urgency within our spirit to be intentionally collective. Holy Spirit, help us to do that. And Father, all of the things that we've been dreaming of and planning for in the future, Jesus, we simply give that all to you. We believe, Holy Spirit, that you've already been leading us in that over the last couple of years in this strategic de development plan. But Lord, we thank you for it. And we're praying that you're going to continue to lead us and guide us and give us wisdom and knowledge and an understanding of what to do and when to do it, that you're at your name. Not our name, but your name would be glorified in this community. Lord, you be glorified. Be glorified. You alone are worthy. And every heart said, amen and amen. God so richly bless you. Thanks for coming here today. Thanks for everyone who's joined us online. And we'll look forward to gathering together and assembling and collecting in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Team is going to lead us out with one last song.